guys, it's Cece. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought we'd do something a little bit different and with the anticipation of new Second Awaken units, I thought it would be a good time to revisit who we currently have available and give you guys the top 10 Second Awaken units that you should build. I'm gonna do this in no particular order and I'm gonna kind of keep it fair and pick some from each element. The first unit that I'm gonna talk about is gonna be Raok, the Fire Inugami, and I'm pretty sure he was actually like the first two-way unit that I did myself. And one of the reasons that he's a really good second awaken unit is his second skill, instead of teaming up with just one ally to attack an enemy, he's gonna bring two allies in with him. And he also gets the bonus on his passive. So typically if you kill an enemy, you will gain an extra turn instantly. And your skill cooldown time will decrease by one turn as well if you do kill that enemy, which is really awesome and just an added benefit to his passive, which makes him a really good 2A unit. The second fire unit that I'm gonna talk about is gonna be Spectra. And this is one that was actually one of my recent units that I did, but the nice thing with having the Spectra second awakening is that second skill normally consumes 10% of your HP, but once he's second awakened, you don't have to worry about that. Your special assault is no longer gonna eat up your set, like your um, HP by using it. And I use my Spectra typically before was in TOA and TOA hard on the boss floor. And I found that sometimes if he had low HP, I'd have to actually time that second skill well. So I wouldn't actually like almost kill my Spectra. But once he's second awakened, you don't have to worry about that. The other part that's great about his 2A is normally the backlash, so it sends out the gust of wind with a 50% chance to decrease attack bar of all enemies by 30% and decreasing their speed for two turns. So with that second awakening, it also decreases the attack power for two turns in there. So overall, if you are using him in places like um, like TOA, TOA hard, and even in dungeons, he has become a part of like, like the DB12 team. If you're not doing the triple Ikaru, then he's a good one to use in there. So having him second awaken is just gonna give you that little bit of a bonus that you might need. And moving into the water element, since we were just talking about dragons B12, we have to talk about the water in Ugami, right? So we kind of know with the, uh, Ikarus that they're kind of the new hype around the DB12 and that's the reason that you should essentially second awaken them and it's similar to Raok in the sense that your team up now brings in the other ally but the unique thing about the Ikaru is the counter attack so that third skill where it attacks the enemy and counter attacks when attacked for one turn when you awaken him it actually turns into a passive which is pretty cool because it completely changes the skill so other than like everything else kind of being in there, like as a unit, he just kind of gets better for that reason. And now there is actually like a specific team that uses him. So it's definitely why we have to include Ikaru as our third pick. So for my number four pick, we're gonna put Bella in here. And I was doing it originally in just order of elements. So I was doing like my fire, my water, my wind. Um, I kind of mixed something up with my water. So between our two water units, we're just gonna slip Bella in here and pretend it didn't happen. But this will be the next pick. So with Bella, uh, it's definitely a key unit that you use a lot early on into mid game. And towards end game, I found I wasn't really using Bella as much until the Dimension Predator came out. And then Bella kind of became a unit that I needed to include in my teams. And with the Second Awaken, also a unit that I've actually been using more in my PvP and has become one of my staple siege offense units actually. So with Bella, if we're looking at the Second Awakening, so normally the second skill is where it attacks the enemy and removes all beneficial effects on the target, right? But when you second awaken Bella, not only is it gonna attack and remove the beneficial effects, but if you're attacking an enemy with no beneficial effects, it's actually gonna recover your attack bar by 30%. So just having that little bit of an addition to Bella is gonna help cycle through your skills a little bit better. And you can kind of use it to time things when you wanna increase your attack bar. So you'll cycle through over to your mobilize a little bit better and a little bit faster. So the reason Bella's in here is because you're gonna be using the unit a lot anyway and having the second awaken is really just gonna bump up those stats a little bit. For the fifth unit I wanna talk about today, it has to be Vigor. He is such a meta second awaken unit right now and for a good reason. Like he, if you haven't built him, I do suggest building him and you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. But with Vigor right now, I would say he's commonly seen in those meta defenses where you're gonna see that Kamoon, you'll see that Skogul and the Vigor. You'll also see Vigor Molly paired together 
quite frequently. And with his second awakening, one of the benefits that he gets is his second skill. So it normally recovers the HP of all allies by 15% each and increases the attack speed for two turns. But with the second awakening, you have that addition where it's gonna decrease the chances of allies receiving critical hits for two turns, which is really good if your allies can't be crit in there. And like the, there's bonuses in the other skills as well. So um, the damage of this attack increases according to your max HP. And the same thing with shredding uh, increases according to your max HP. So typically with Vigor, um, usually he's a tank unit. As I said, when you pair him with like Kmoon and Skogul, he's going to be kind of in there to stall things so Skogul can do the damage from his rocks. So I would say commonly you'll see those speed HP HP type Vigors built, but he's a really good second awakened unit that you should definitely work on once you can. And moving into number six for our wind units, we're going to pick Shannon. So Shannon is a unit that I haven't used in a very long time, but I feel like if you are kind of like early mid game and you are using her, especially in like giants teams, the second awaken that she gets is really nice. So normally with Shannon, if we're looking at her skill two, attacks all enemies, decreasing their attack speed for two turns with the 80% chance on each target. And then her first skill, so this one, uh, attacks the enemy with the chance to increase glancing hit for two turns. But if we go into her second awaken, so attacks the enemy with the energy ball, the attack has a 75% chance to increase the enemy's chance to glance, so having the glancing, but it also absorbs the attack bar by 15%, which is a nice addition to that first skill. And then with her second skill, attacks all enemies and de decreases their attack speed for two turns, also absorbs their attack bar by 10% with an 80% chance. So both of her first and second skill now absorbs their attack bar. So essentially you're increasing your attack bar and decreasing theirs, which is gonna help for her pep talk where it increases the attack power and defense of all allies for three turns. So I feel like she could still have a use in PVP, but I feel like for a second, like a two-star unit, her getting that second awakening really kind of bumps up her skills a little bit and just gives you the added benefit to actually like take some of their attack bar and give it to yourself. So Shannon is definitely a top pick and that 2A really helped her out. Number seven is gonna go to the Wind Marshall Cat, Naomi. So with her, she is a solid choice that you can use in like off the top of my head, like Giant Speed 12. And with her second awakening, so normally if we are gonna go ahead and look at her passive, this gains 25% critical chance and deals 20% more damage for every harmful effect that's on the target, which is really nice if they have a lot of dots, a lot of debuffs on them. And her second awaken, one of the reasons that I do feel like she would be like a top unit in here is because that passive is gonna change. The critical rate will be 100% if the enemy has harmful effects. So you don't even have to really worry about the crit rate because now it's in her passive, right? And the inflicted damage will be increased by 20% for each harmful effect, so that's the same there. Um, we also have her second skill, so launches two consecutive attacks on the enemy, inflicting damage and decreasing the enemy's attack bar by 25% for each chance, so you have the chance to decrease the attack bar, but it's the aw second awakening on this. So similar to some of the other units that can do um, more damage and stuff, something that's built into her kit, so launches two consecutive attacks on an enemy, leaving a branding effect for two turns with a 50% chance and decreasing the enemy's attack bar by 25% with each attack. So the reason I'm saying she's really good in like a giant's uh, B12 is she's gonna have the branding and then she has that passive in there where the crit rate is 100%. So this can help your team do like tons of damage and the difference she gets from being just like a normal unit to second awakening, I feel like she was a unit that we didn't look at, at all before her second awakening, right? Especially the wind one, it was just whatever. And I feel like the 2-8 honestly like revitalized her and it was a unit I would never even consider using. And now I feel like can help a lot of people in their dungeon teams. And this brings us into our dark category for number eight. And again, we're looking at a Marshall cat, but we're looking at Miho here. So Miho, similar to when I was talking about Naomi, I feel like wouldn't even consider her before the second awakening. And after that happened, it was just a unit that you saw pop up everywhere, right? Like when she first came out, she was seen everywhere in RTA. And now I feel like in Siege, she's in so many of those meta defenses that you see with Miho. And part of that reason would be in her second awakening, if we are looking at her passive, for example, just as her normal Miho, attacks the attacker with a critical hit to inflict damage that's proportionate to your attack power and stuns the target for one turn with a 40% chance when attacked with a critical hit. Additionally, your attack bar increases by 30%. 
And if we look at that eye for an eye now, so it increases your attack bar by 30% and counterattacks the attacker with a critical hit when you're hit with a critical hit. The second part of this is really where I think she became kind of a standout unit, which is you won't get defeated with critical hit attacks, right? So I feel like that alone makes her one of those awesome second awakened units and one that was a priority for myself in PVP because you'll see her on like defenses. Like I said, even in arena, you'll see her because you actually have to plan a little differently with your units. Like if you have a lot of units with a high crit rate, you almost have to hope that you glance just so you can kill her in there, right? And her first skill also changes. So uh, attacks with the spinning punch and has that chance to stun. So the second awaken, um, it's just that you're gonna attack with a spinning punch and the chance to stun, but you can also recover HP by 20% of the inflicted damage. So like with Miho, typically you'll also see her on a vamp build. So not only will she gain HP by that first skill, but just in general when she's attacking and you have the vamp, you'll kind of have that self-sustain in her, which can be make or break, especially when you can't get defeated by critical hits. Like Miho is definitely like a top, top 2A unit. And number nine is coming over to Crow. So Crow is a unit that I feel like before the second awakening, people weren't really using. It was a unit that I at some point was using and then fell off and didn't touch it. But as soon as Crow got that second awakening, I was like such a solid unit. And now I honestly use a lot. Like it's a key part that I use in my dungeons and then in the dimensional predator and just overall a really good unit that you should be using. So the reason that I like Crow and the big change that Crow actually got is if we're looking at the third skill scar, so attacks the enemy's wounds, the damage increases by 50% for each harmful effect on the enemy. But when you're going in with the second awaken, it's gonna attack the enemy's wounds and leave a branding effect for two turns. And then the, en uh, the damage increases by 50% for each harmful effect on the enemy. But similar to what I was talking about Naomi, you having a unit that's a three star that you can put that branding on is really good. And in addition to that with Crow on the second skill, so teams up with another ally to attack the enemy. The second awakening teams up with another ally to attack the enemy. The damage increases by 20% for each harmful effect on the enemy. And the effect also applies to allies who attack together. So Crow definitely got that revitalized by adding in the branding and then adding in you being able to do more damage for the harmful effects. Definitely makes Crow like a top pick and I feel like he's kind of a core unit for like certain dungeons that we're doing and he's got that use for it. So it should definitely be on your list as well for a top second awaken unit. And for my 10th and final second awaken unit that I feel like is a top one. So this one, it took me a minute to try to decide. I was kind of looking at the light werewolf and everything and then I was looking at the light martial cat. And part of the thing that I considered throughout this list is like usability of the units. So this would be how much do I feel like they've changed between what they were and what they became or how often did we already use the unit? So the reason that I'm also picking the light martial cat as my 10th pick is similar to what I said with the other cats where I didn't use them at all before the 2A and then with it, it really made me reconsider the unit. So if we're looking at the light one, so the passive here normally attacks the attack bar by 20% if you attack a monster with the same or lower HP status compared to yours, recovers your HP by 20% of the damage dealt. If you attack a monster that's better HP than yours, da da da. So with the second awaken, it actually does change up to 50%, which is a pretty significant increase. If you're going 20% up to 50% is really good. And then having that kind of paired in with her other skills. So like um, you still have the first one with the spinning punch and stunning. So for the new unit, so um, the spinning punch, but it's gonna be 50% and the damage is gonna increase according to your max HP. So the light cat's really good because of that change in that passive. So going from 20% up to 50, but I've also included her in this list because without that second awaken, we wouldn't be considering these units at all. So it definitely makes her my 10th and final pick. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and those top 10 second awaken units that you should build in no particular order. If you guys have any others that you think should have been included in this list, comment down below and let everybody know. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you're enjoying the content and you want to see more of it. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, hit that sub button and take a look at the join button where you can become a member and get cool perks. That's it for today. So bye for now. Next level.